freelance journalist Doug Grindle was recently in northeast Afghanistan, embedded with the U.S. Marines. He traveled north from Kabul to the Tagab Valley in Kapisa province to observe a Marine training team working with the Afghan National Army on security and reconstruction. The Tagab Valley is pretty important because if the insurgents actually control the Tagab Valley, then they can come down and interdict the main road between Kabul and Jalalabad. It's one of the biggest highways in the country and extremely important for trade. Also, the coalition and the government want to build a new road up through the Tagab Valley to the north, opening up a main new trade route and helping economic development. We're uh, located in southern Tagal Valley to begin a transformation process where we start with road construction, increase security uh, capabilities out here and other developmental capabilities to uh, transform the environment and to remove this area uh, as a safe haven for the enemy. So we do believe there are uh, anti-coalition or anti-Afghan, anti-Afghan people elements uh, in this uh, valley, particularly uh, lower Tagab, but not as far south as we are actually north of our current location up toward the village at Tagab. And we're going to work from both ends and sandwich them uh, and push them out. We also believe there are elements, and know for a fact there are elements in Usman Valley that is off to our east, and we'll also work to interdict those. And I can't talk any more about that, but uh, they know we're here and we know uh, where they're located. What role does the ANA play in, in building this road and transforming this, this environment? Well, two parts. First, the ANA brought their own heavy equipment out here uh, on their own initiative to improve the road because it was very, very rough and they could not rapidly uh, move security forces. Uh, secondly, they're out here to provide, and primarily, they're out here to provide security uh, for this environment, for the uh, population as we transform the environment. Now, a road contractor is here today doing his first assessment and he will start work uh, very soon on the road in a more deliberate fashion than the ANA doing it themselves. It's a, uh, a joint effort between the ANA and the ETT advisors that uh, work for and with me, the uh, American Marines and the uh, National Guardsmen uh, working with the ANA and help mentor them through the counterinsurgency, through counterinsurgency planning. And a lot of counterinsurgency, of course, is development because we want to secure the population and that's, we're competing for the population just like the enemy is competing for the population. This is the village that we came to um, last week. Yeah, this is the western side of Camp Shunko. You can get the rest of the hill over there. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't know this was the doctor's office. It is. Uh, he, he said we can use it for 30 days. Um, the CO is going to talk to him uh, down the road and see if we can use it for an additional 30. Uh, the, uh, the benefit from this location here is we've got a, a well that's just, you know, 50, 75 meters from from this hatch here, pump the water. It is. Sir. Good. We we got a we got a water pump. Um, that uh, all we need is a fitting that they're going to try and find at the bazaar, and they should be able to pull the uh, uh, water to resupply the soldiers, especially the ones that are on the OPs. Sure. How are they getting the water up there? Is there a trail? Right now they're just humping them up there. Oh man. So if you look up on the hill, just for scale, you see the guy up on the hill. He's coming down from the OP. They got an OP up on that hill, an observation post. They got one on. That hill over there, you can see once again for scale. He's he's over a kilometer away, and then he got one on that hill and one on that hill. Yeah, it's not it's not good to be in the uh, the low ground. At least at least without controlling the high ground around it. Okay, so now those guys are running up the hill. Why are they doing that? They're going up to the OP up there, uh, taking care of the high ground, just uh, because they, they have a better uh, view of uh, everything else that's going on around. What are, they, what are they looking out for? They're uh, basically, uh, they say we start getting hit from somewhere. They uh, they pretty much know where it's coming from. These guys have great eyesight. So what is the security situation like around here? I have a feeling like, you know, there are insurgents working through this area on a fairly regular basis. Uh, I would say that is a, a fair estimate. Uh, they, they go through, they blend in with the population. They go back and forth. Taxis are up and down the road all the time. Guaranteed, there's there's some uh, insurgents in the cars, uh, just checking out what we're doing, uh, observing what we're doing. Uh, further up the valley, up into uh, Kaja Hill and uh, Lushin K, 
there's there's definitely activity and they're also moving down to the east side of this ridge here uh, all the way up to Chine on the back side of that hill uh, there is movement so I give it one maybe two days before they get hit up here uh, the attacks will start because now we're starting to push into their ground um, and once again it's a business and we're, we're impinging on their business and when you talk about getting attacked in one or two days I mean um, I think it's isn't it known that there might be 50 or 100 insurgents sort of like in the area at any one time and um, they, they can know. mass they can mass fairly quickly uh, they come from the other side of that larger hill over there into the Usbin Valley they can come from there they can come from the East Kowasafi district they can come in this this area and, and uh, mass for a single attack does that give you concern about you know your guys in the ANA up here or is that just something which they can deal with I believe it's something they can deal with uh, they're, they'd be fighting on their terms they're not going into their territory. They're they're staying here uh, in their defensive positions. They're pushing out patrols. The, they should have some knowledge of uh, an impending attack through uh, intelligence. You guys are really relying on the ANA doing their job in order to you know to get through this stuff. And they're they're learning as they go. The new Kandak, uh, but they're they're picking up quickly. They have some uh, strong leaders. They pulled in a few strong leaders, uh, ringers, if you will and uh, they're, they're helping them along. I can tell you right now, they've exceeded all of our expectations. They have gotten out here, they're much further north than uh, we initially planned. As you, as you know from the position we were just at, they have uh, chosen to rent a, uh, a, a home site uh, from the local population that puts money into the uh, local economy and also provides them a place to operate from. Uh, they're on the high ground all around the road. They're conducting a, a medical outreach now with local villages and they're also conducting sure as uh, with the villagers further north explaining to them that if they cooperate with the government they will get more uh, development and uh, more benefit for their families. Over here, this is um, where the CO and they do all their planning at and um, we have radio guys up here. They basically receive all, they have radio people up there too. They, um, comm guys, they give them and tell them what's going on. If they see something bad going on, they'll just report back. And then they do the planning in here. Earlier on, they were doing that. Over in here, that's um, more of their comm stuff in here. And um, if we move on over there. So this is all a and stuff? Yes, over here it's all a and stuff. We got, our, we got our little shack, you know, but this is mainly an a and five. We're just following their lead. Um, this is where the a and soldiers stay at in here. No, it's not a lot of people that are going to be in here, but about 10 people. And uh, follow us over here. This is, this is where our little staging area is over here. We have um, our storage room in there, and uh, this is mainly where we're going to be out here. Um, so you guys are going to be living out of this place? Yes, we are. We're going to be living out of We're going to be operating out of here. Well, um, any patrols or anything, just out of here. Um, what else? This, I think this is going to be their um, cooking area over here. It's not much, but it does the job, gets the job done for the a and And this is the little base that we're going to have over here for a good, a good while. We're going to have about like a month or so up here. So what's it like living out here in the middle of nowhere? Yeah. Well, it's not that bad actually at all. Um, once you get used to talking to that, you know, rela relating with the A and A, we're embedded. We're an embedded team with, you know, with the A and A. So we have to stay out here with them, and it's not much of a problem at all. Does it ever concern you that it's like Afghan soldiers who might not be as reliable as American soldiers or Marines? Or? No, it really doesn't do much of that because um, they have, especially with this company and a um, couple of um, Kandak higher ups. We have um, really good leadership, so they actually keep everybody in check on what's going on. But we're fighting with them side by side, so we have to trust them. Now they get ready to roll some uh, patrols out into the plateau around this hill, into the plateau north of here. The next. Next, yeah, the next town up is uh, Kajakil, and after that is Lucian K.
uh, two, two places that are, uh, as they call them, bad, bad people up there. Getting around, you're amongst the population. They see you're out there. They see that, uh, that you're taking an interest in what they're doing. You're interacting. They, all the, uh, the bad press that the uh, Taliban, Al-Qaeda, HIG, that they're putting out that we're devils, you know, kind of like the 18th century. Uh, if you start dispelling the myths that we're human, that we're, you know, that we're not there to steal their children and, you know, and rape their wives, that, you know, it's, it's a, it's image building. One of these things, what are these compounds called? These are uh, kalats. Um, it means either house or fortress in Dari. And uh, yeah, the, the original family, you see the one over here is just the foundation. Uh, they're starting to build it there. Probably the, uh, the parents with some kids. And as the, uh, the family grows and the sons get married, they'll move in. And uh, this little collot right here to our front has one, two, three, four, five, six, probably six families living there, all their animals and such. So they, they can be pretty extensive. The one across the valley, I'd say probably about the same size, six families in that as well. As far as you know, activity in the area, you know what this place is like as far as you know, Taliban support uh, it's first of all it, it's it's a day versus night thing you know by day generally coalition isn't going to run into any any real resistance at all um, they know that we're here to help you know and uh, and they appreciate it uh, at night uh, who's to say which Kalat you know Taliban might come to and you know, knock on the door of, uh, you know, any any family's household and, you know, ask them uh, for support or, or force them, you know, to give them support. When I, when I take a look at the Afghans, I take a look at the villages and I see people that, you know, they look at us with, you know, just kind of shock and awe when they see us roll through and and other other groups, they'll look at you with a little bit of uh, nonchalance because they've They've seen it before in their lives. Um, it might be nothing to them to see a modern, you know, 21st century military force roll through and on a mission that you don't stop to give them details on. They just think, you know, you know, the sun sun's rising and it's going to set again, and nothing's really changing. So, um, but uh, they're, you know, they're when I see their houses and whatnot, they're they're not living poor. You know, our, our standards shouldn't really be brought into the picture when, when you take a look at their houses. You know, it's a different part of the world and they've been doing things a certain way for uh, centuries on end. We try to interact with the, with the villagers as much as possible. You know, we, we hand out you know school supplies, candy, you know, all this little stuff for kids. We're not over here to do, like, mess up their way of life. We're over here trying to make sure that they're safe, trying to teach these guys what we know. On the other side of this line of hills over there, the French got, you know, like some casualties and stuff, and you're reasonably close to Pakistan. Does that bother you? Does that sort of like, you know, uh, make you nervous? It does, but I knew the risk when I was signing up. You know, it's something I, I didn't sign up saying, it's like, I hope I'm safe. I want to be out there, you know, you know, doing this for my country. You know, I, I migrated illegally from Mexico into America, and America's given me so much, and I'm trying to give something back. So when, when I'm out here, I remind myself every day of everything that I've, was given to me, the opportunities that I had. So now I'm, now I'm trying to help out, give, give something back. Yeah, I try to make it a you know, resemblance of home as much as possible. Real field living. Oh, yeah. I love it out here. I don't like it back in the rear, you know, sitting, you know, walking around doing nothing. Here it makes the time go by a lot faster, you know, and I feel like I'm actually doing something. We got some fries here. We're making onions right now too. I'm just pouring some salt on here just to make the taste a little better. You like some? Yeah, onions going as well. Yeah, fried onions.
نازلہ دادا کا یعنی نی گمت نی پیدا پورے بھائی پیدا کو تو مرتضی مرتضی Yeah, just pull it down so that way you have it down in front of you. Further down. Like right about there. Yeah. yeah. You just need to loosen your sling up. But here, I mean, this is it. Down like that, but much. The carabiner won't do anything for you. Mm. Here. Yeah. You got the same thing. Mm. Is that uh, Hindustani? Hindustani. America. America? Yeah. Look at that. That's pretty safe, but Parsi. Jaise da Parsi. Parsi. No, no. That's a, that's a hand. How close are those guys to working without the assistance of guys like you? This especially, um, most of the companies in our Canada are really close now. And um, we've seen them operate them on their own. And they they really know their tactics more than most people think. And uh, more than we, um, we were overconfident in our skills, you know. And when we see these guys work, we're like, all right, they know their stuff. And they're almost ready for us to leave. But what's the most difficult thing you guys have to deal with, you know, with regard to the a and just in general? Logistics. They they are not set up for logistics. Uh, I don't know if it's cultural. Uh, they'll fight at the drop of a hat. You know, they'll push out to a fight at the drop of a hat, but they won't be able to sustain the fight. Uh, whereas with just a little bit of planning and a little bit of logistics push, uh, they'd be able to stay out there for indefinitely. But I can guarantee you right now, no one has considered winter close. And winter is coming. This is a little different out here. We're, we're trying to build a little road, establish security, and, and bring governance to the people. To, to separate the insurgent from the, uh, the population, alienate the uh, insurgent, and broadcast the government message. The American strategy in Afghanistan is predicated on bringing uh, influence uh, into the local villagers, into the, persuading the villagers essentially to back the uh, Afghan government and the U.S. forces. The best way to do that is to show them that the Afghan government and U.S. forces care. And to show them that, uh, what you want to do is, is give them something. And the best thing to give them is a road, uh, because a road will instantly make their life better. Uh, it increases their communications with their people down the valley. It increases their ability to take things to market. Uh, a road just can transform the life of a village. And if a village has had its life transformed to the benefit, uh, to the good, then it's more likely to support the government uh, and the American forces, um, you know, so the thinking goes. So um, having uh, or putting a road in can make a huge difference. Uh, and without that, you know, essentially it's, 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 it's in one sense it's sort of bribing the, the locals that they should support the government. Uh, another way it's just demonstrating that, hey, look, you know, this is something we can do for you. This is something the Taliban insurgents cannot do for you. Uh, you need to support us. And, you know, for the, for the most part, villagers love the roads. The significance of this meeting is, is that essentially there was uh, the Afghan National Army people, the Marine advisors, then the elders of the village, and then the, uh, the Kabul government guy as well as the contractors. And all these people are brought together. Um, usually they're brought together by uh, the provincial reconstruction teams run by the Americans and the coalition. But this time there wasn't any of that. There's no, none of that military uh, reconstruction people. The ANA had actually managed to organize all of this with the advisors' help by themselves. And the idea is that, you know, why shouldn't the ANA, the Afghans, uh, be able to like sort this stuff out and actually uh, get you know pull together the local government as well as the uh, you know the government in Kabul and make these projects happen it's uh, cuts out a layer of, of red tape and the, the advisor said they were pretty pleased that it shows that the ANA are actually able to like you know do this work with the villagers themselves okay. now it's now 2008 you know um, this is obviously a remote area and yet it's only an hour and a half from Kabul. Is there any particular reason that it's taken, you know, years to, to get a, a presence of the ANA of the Army up here? Well, Southern Tagab has always been a tough spot uh, for the ANA, and, and quite frankly, the, the Afghan government has not been able to generate the forces fast enough, and those they have generated, they have chose to employ 
in other critical areas. We finally have work to this area, and don't be fooled by its proximity to, uh, to Kabul. There are certainly areas that are further away from this that uh, may be perceived as more important, and in fact, they were, and that's why we put capacity there first. A cornerstone of uh, counterinsurgency is economic development, governance, and security. And the ANA is involved primarily in security, but uh, establishing security facilitates the development of governments and the development of the economy. If the people have something worth living for and they feel that they have benefit uh, from their government, they're more likely to side with their government than the enemy. And of course, the counterinsurgency is all, all about the population because the insurgent, the enemy, that is against the Afghan people as well as the coalition, cannot exist without support from the population. And yet the insurgents will come in and say, here, uh, you know, we'll give you $50 to like lay this roadside bomb or like, go on this patrol against the Americans. You know, I mean, is it, it must be, uh, it's ready cash for, for villagers to, you know, as if the insurgents come in, right? Well, that, that may be a choice, they, a, a bad choice they may make, and we have certain mechanisms in place to, to prevent that from happening. But the, on the more positive side, if they decide with the government, they could very well get a job with one of the contractors that we're negotiating right now with the ANA and be hired by that contractor to build the road, build the wells, build schools, build clinics, etc. So they're part of the solution, and they're not on the run. They're not, uh, you know, working for, for the insurgent. Because once they start working for the insurgent, he's going to stay on them. And if, and if the, uh, the employee, so to speak, of the insurgent chooses to go the other way, well, then the insurgent's going to go after him. It's much better for him to cooperate with us. We'll stay here in the area. Everybody wins except for the insurgent. And the last thing, sir, I mean, obviously this is a, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a still several years on, the war is still going on. You know, why, why do these sort of efforts take so long? You know, people hear that, you know, the insurgents are, are almost as strong as they were perhaps years ago. I can't speak about how long, how far the, along the insurgents have come over the last few years, but I can tell you, you know, we say this is uh, building an airplane while we're flying it. We're building an army, we're uh, training an army, we're equipping an army, at the same time we're employing them in combat in a very complex situation in an environment that has been destroyed by years of war. So there's a lot going on around here, and there's a tremendous amount of progress being made. We have a long way to go, but we are rebuilding a society, a country, an army, a police force, all simultaneously, uh, more or less uh, under-resourced compared to other theaters of war in the, in the world right now. We're, we're going to win because the Afghan people want us to win, and they want to win. Th their winning is our winning, and that's what's going to happen, I have no doubt. It may take longer than we want, but uh, we're already starting to see uh, progress in a lot of areas where we haven't seen it before. The insurgent has nothing to offer. It's a negative. Their, their platform is, is negative. The, the U.S., the coalition, and the Afghan government have a lot to offer. We have a lot of work to be done. We need to demand more out of our ANA across the country. We need to demand more out of the Afghan government. And still a lot to be done, but we've come a long way. The military says the number of attacks in Afghanistan have risen by 30 percent this year over last year. In some areas it's more like 40 percent, other areas it's more like 20 percent, but it's up about 30 percent total. That's the number of attacks. The lethality of the attacks have gone up as well. Uh, that's because the insurgents are, are up their use of roadside bombs a lot, as well as suicide bombers. And the roadside bombs, um, you know, were proven in Iraq to kill a lot of people. And so uh, now that Iraq is winding down somewhat, um, a lot of those people with expertise in roadside bombs in Iraq have now come over to Afghanistan. Essentially, people that used to have uh, a difficult time uh, killing uh, coalition forces here, they sort of fire small, small arms at them and RPGs, and, and sometimes they kill people, sometimes they wouldn't. Well, now they can turn to experienced bomb makers in Pakistan, uh, and the bomb makers will show them how to, like, do the IEDs, and the IEDs now... You know, you take out one truck and you've killed four people. Um, so the length, the lethality is up, um, as well as the number of attacks. And and lastly, is like the military now in Afghanistan is saying, you know, we can't really sort out the Afghan situation. We won't win here until the Pakistan situation is is essentially done, uh, until there's a resolution over there. Um, and that's a that's a new thing. So you know, overall, in terms of the strategic uh, idea, you know, the situation in Afghanistan has definitely taken a turn for the worse. Freelance journalist Doug Grindle has provided C-SPAN video from Afghanistan and Iraq. You can watch this story and others on our website, cspan.org. On our homepage, in the search box, type G-R-I-N-D-L-E.